Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we're going to see next type of BFS problem. Before further ado, let's start with the problem itself, and after that, we will figure out okay what that type of problem of BFS is. Problem says that okay, we are having an n cross n grid containing only values zero and one, where zero represents water and one represents land. Find a water cell such that its distance to the nearest land cell is maxima maximized. We have to find a water cell. Water cell is a zero cell. So we have multiple zero cells. We have to find one such zero cell such that its distance to the land, nearest land cell, nearest, mark my word, nearest land cell. You understood by something nearest land cell, if you want to find the distance to the nearest land cell, we use a BFS. Okay, cool. And return the distance, whatever is the maximum. If no land or water exists in the grid, it is minus one. Cool. That is a base condition we will look as we do solve the problem. But for now, our main problem is, okay, this. The distance, it is given as a Manhattan distance, where if we have the distance x0, y0, then the distance is nothing but mod of x0 minus y0 plus uh, y0 minus x minus y1. Now, it says, okay, uh, find a water cell. So how about I just start from every of those water cells, right? and just go to the nearest land cell and see whichever has the maximum distance. So one option is I just grab this one water cell and I just try to go to the nearest land cell. To go to the nearest land cell, we just do a simple BFS as we saw in the last videos also because it's just standard, okay? Nearest land cell, nearest which means breadth wise, I just try to go to every of those cells and just see, okay, how quickly I can reach my nearest land cell. Uh, for this, the distance is nothing but one because it's just decided. For this water cell, the distance is one. For this water cell, the distance is two because the nearest land cell is nothing but here, 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 and here. For every of those land cells, the distance is nothing but two. Cool. Smart numbers. I'm saying nearest land cell and all are actually nearest. Cool. Uh, for this node right here, nearest land cell is here and here. So the distance is one. For this node right here, the nearest land cell is here and here and the distance is one. Out of that, maximum is nothing but two. Thus, we can easily see, because it was saying, its distance to the nearest land cell is maximized. That water cell I need to find out. So it is this water cell with the distance of two. So my answer is nothing but two. As you can see the answer two. But you saw what happened. I just went on to every of those water cells, which can be O of n square. And just I did a BFS, which actually just BFS on this entire matrix. It's actually O of n square. So the complexity is nothing but O of n h power 4. It's actually pretty much. Although the test case here n is less than or equal to 100. It might pass. But still, it's way too much. Can we optimize it? Let's see. What happened in this was for every of those water cells, I was going on to the nearest land cell, right? Why not reverse that same thing? Which means from the land cell, from every of those land cell, let me change the color. Uh, let's take it pink. From every of those land cell, I just try to do a simple BFS to reach to the water cell. Because ultimately, I just need to reach to the water cell. And BFS will help me reach in a shortest possible way which means if i do a bfs from all these ones because see i have to start from all these ones for sure because ultimately i just need to do a parallel bfs so i just start from all these ones and in the one step it will just reach to all these nearest zeros in the next step okay it will try to reach the next location it is all visited next thing is this you saw what happened. My all the cells, it got visited in two steps. Thus, what earlier was happening was you were moving from all these cells. See, from here, you just moved here. Earlier, what was happening was from here, you were moving here or here. From here, currently, it, what, is, what is happening? From here, you are moving here. From here, you are, you are moving here. Earlier, what used to or what we wanted to happen was from this zero, it moved here and here. That's the same thing it just did. It's just okay. Now we can start with all these one cells and can actually do a multi source BFS because we are starting from all these one cells. Earlier in our first lecture, in our last to last lecture, we saw okay, we start with one node. 
But here we are starting with four nodes, or it can be more nodes as well, which means I'm starting with all the ones. So it's a multi-source BFS in which it will actually start from one, 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 and we'll just try to go to every of those nearest zeros. Now, what happened for this zero was, as you saw, as you saw in this step, it, it, it went to here. After that, it went to here. Cool. Only what was happening was, it was going to the nearest of these zero cells and after that it was going on to that one. Just reverse thing is happening but the trick and the fun part is now I don't, I don't have to do for every of those water cells. I can just start with my lens cells, land cells because ultimately I had, to, I had to reach those lens cells. So I can just start from all those lens cells and I just try to okay do a BFS which means shortest distance to that particular water cell. And ultimately, that will give me my actual answer. Let's see the next thing, but particularly it will become very easy. First thing what I could have done was, I could have gone uh, a BFS from every of those nodes. Okay, I just did a BFS from here, then from here, then from here, then from here, then from here, it just goes here, 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 and so on for every of the cells. But as we saw, we can start with the land cell and try to do a BFS because it's just reverse for all the water cells. The location, the, the distance will be accumulated or the mark for all the water cells. I just started from this one step, one distance. I just reach here and here. Distance is one. From here, I just start. Okay. I just reach here, here and here. In one step, I can just, because I'm just moving breath wise so that I can just see, okay, it is now covered. Now the distance is actually two. And for sure, we are not visiting the same cell again and again because we can move four directionally. In the last video, I told what is eight directional movement, what is four directional movement. It is a four directional movement, which means up, down, left, and right. Okay, cool. Now we have reached here, here, and here. Next location we can move is down. Here we can move right. Here we can move down. Here we can move right. So, new, so the new look cells which are marked now are these two. Mark all the color, these two, and the distance is now three. You see what's happening at every step, you are just moving on to the next of those water cells, and thus the distance is being increased every time. Ultimately, I just move from here to here. Now the BFS will stop, which means all these cells are visited at last. All these cells are visited, which means ultimately my water cell, which was visited at the end because for sure water cell will be visited because we are starting itself from the land nodes and in the matrix it's either land or water so if in the last one water cell, water cell is visited it is the last cell it is the last cell which is visited which means it is the farthest cell which was visited and it is the maximum distance i just want my answer is four now from nh power four the time complexity reduced to, reduced to nh power Two. Why? Because we are starting from all those one cells and just doing a simple BFS on a matrix. It's just that now instead of one source, we can have multiple sources. That's it. The only difference is that this that okay, we can have multiple starting nodes in this BFS. And we have just O of n square. Space is O of n square because of Q and also because of the visited array. But we, if the interview says that you can modify the input as, as well, the grid as well, then you can actually use your grid itself to actually mark that node. If the node is visited, I will mark my that cell of that grid as let's say minus one. Minus one will say, say okay. If it is not one or two, it is minus one, which means okay. It is visited. So although it is not recommended to modify the input grid, as I told in the last video also, but still, if the interview says, okay, just modify me a bit more. So you can just let him know or her know that, okay, we can reduce the a bit space. The complexity will not reduce, but the extra n square space will reduce by just not using that visited array and using our grid itself to actually modify the input and mark. Okay. If the grid cell is minus one, so it is. It is visited. Let's see the code pretty quickly. I hope that you guys got it exactly. It's just that okay, we have to start from all the one cells, and that's what we are doing. Uh, in the last video, also we saw okay how we can have this Q, we can have a vector, a Q of vector. Here, as, as I said, a vector is a bit slower than a pair. So here in this video, I took a pair to actually show you okay how multiple things, how you can write the code 
in different ways. So let's start with the Q. We have this Q because a simple BFS needs a Q. Q will have a pair which will actually grab the coordinates. Then we have the vector of visited as grid because for sure you just need okay what is visited and what is not then you just actually grab all the one cells in your queue that is how a multi-source bfs which means in the starting itself you're you're you not pushing one node you're pushing every of those nodes which have the value one into your queue and next as i told you in the condition which we need to check that okay if the cells if no land or water exist they have to return a minus one. So it's the same thing which you are doing. If no land, when Q is empty, what is Q having? Q is having land. So no land or no water, which means if the Q itself is full of all the cells, so for sure no water is there. So I just return a minus one. Now I will actually start my actual BFS. The distance is initially marked as zero. Mark my words. If it is marked as zero, in a BFS, we actually visit cells not these steps which means in one step i am here i am starting with these four cells so the distance is actually as soon as see initially it is zero but uh, but as soon as all these four cells are visited the distance will become one now at the next steps when these four cells which are the nearest neighbors are visited the, the distance will become two when in the next step the third last cell which is visited the distance will become three so the distance here in the BFS is actually okay. All the cells which are visited. But actually we want the steps. Which means if these three cells are visited. So the steps are actually two. So we ultimately in the last will return a distance minus one rather than distance. Cool. Now actually it's a standard BFS which we had seen pretty earlier in last lecture also. That okay. We just have this queue. Then we have the size to actually go on to these that that particular level of that queue i'll just grab that coordinates i'll just pop i just do okay what all its neighbors its neighbors are nothing but up left right down when they are not visited so i'll just see okay and check if that location is a valid location which means if i am going to my next neighbor next neighbor is nothing but x plus dx and y plus dy which i told you how we make with these four directionally connected we just make a 2d array to actually go to the neighbors i told you in the last video also how we make this particular thing and in the last video also we told about how eight directionally is being made then again we check okay if the visit is zero only then we can visit it if it is zero then we actually visit that particular thing and push that in my queue and ultimately at every step of that queue traversal because let's say if one layer is done next layer is done next layer is done i have to increase the distance and as I told you last also, when one layer is done, okay, one distance, next layer, like ne ne next distance, next layer, ne next distance, then ultimately I have to turn a distance minus one because it's a number of steps. That's pretty much it. I hope that you guys liked it. C++ code I explained below, exact Java code is down below for your reference and these notes will be pro uh, given to you. I hope that you guys liked it. If yes, then do the like button and see you in the next video. Goodbye. Take care. Bye.